the Niners offense is is better than it's been since Kyle Shanahan's been here. If they it, it might just carry the team to a Super Bowl victory. But now all of a sudden I have questions about the defense, specifically the secondary. It popped up against Kansas City. I mean, uh Patrick Mahomes made that look easy. But it was it felt like a one off. Then they faced Miami and guys were open down the field, but Tua he didn't have offense alignment. He just couldn't make the mm-hmm. throws. I mean, but they was there for t- Brady, it was there for the for Washington big time and then culminating in this last game against the Raiders what are you seeing from the secondary like wh- why are these breakdowns happening um I think some of them it's a myriad of things because it all doesn't happen for one single reason right, right. so some of it can just be process and what I mean by process is that our defense is built from the inside out um we really rely on our defensive line to apply pressure and to get the ball out short. That's why it's almost kind of like, if you think about it, our defense yeah. kind of dil- dilutes the farther we get away from the ball. Um, we have a very good linebacking core in front seven. Um, so some of, the, some, of, some of that stuff, honestly, was uh, steady flushing out of the pocket, you know, which is another issue because when we have stagnant quarterbacks, um, we tend to get a little lazy because – we think that uh, people are just going to stand there and get hit. You know, our defense and line check it down to... and check yes. it down, right? Right. So we don't Which have to goes... cover. We don't have to cover. Yeah. We just tackle. Yes. yes. And optically, it looks good because we have such a good linebacking core. And the secondary kind of got exposed a little more with DJ going out, um, with Dre Greenlaw, with Dre Greenlaw going out. So uh, yeah, yeah. I feel like um, plaster coverage is one thing that I feel like is just communication. Um, mm-hmm. that's when receivers get to the end of their routes, um, quarterback flushes the pocket, and then you stick with whoever's in your vicinity, no matter if uh-huh. you're playing zone or a man. Um, we did a horrible job at plastering. And at times we really don't communicate well because yeah. we're a little too over, we're a little too physical. We're a little too over aggressive. Um, that's emblematic of just, um, some of the things that really hurt us. If, if, how you get us is the secondary. Mm-hmm. But what compiles it is when you get calls for late hits or face masks or Fred Warner landing on top of Drake Greenlaw. You know, what was he or, doing in this game, man? The whole time he was reckless. I think that he was just a little too overzealous. He like was. he was trying to prove a point. And yeah. I feel like when you're the emotional leader of a defense, which he sometimes is. you over, in, which he is, he sometimes is. you over embellish to yeah. let that stuff permeate and yeah. it kind of backfired on them a little bit I thought it um did. yeah yeah um the also who we were facing and i'll say it again las vegas is a team that has nine losses within one score of each other i didn't know and that. yeah yes yeah. and nick bosa said it and i already i've I, i've been feeling this guy but uh they have the leading rusher in the nfl yeah. He is another. Josh he's so Jacobs good. is a dog. <clears throat> I mean, okay. Bosa said it's the best running. He's the best running back he's ever faced. He faced McCaffrey two months ago. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> but I, I gotta say, gotta be real. Gotta keep it real. Yeah. Um. If yeah. you're looking at, if you're looking at that <clears throat> run game, um. Yeah. And Josh Jacobs is very patient. Uh. He has a lot of visions, and he arm tackles are not going to do it with him. Um. It, it's just not happening. Uh. One of the things that I will say, again, is that circumstances necessarily don't define who you are, but they reveal who you are. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they reveal is what are you going to do contemporaneously in those circumstances? So some of the things that I did see earlier in the game, and this is, you know what, this isn't just our game, Grant, just the Mm -hmm. Las Vegas game, but I saw this against Washington. I saw this against Miami. Um, I didn't necessarily see the adjustments that much against the Chiefs because we were hurt. But one of the things that we do up front is that I started seeing a lot of different techniques used differently up front. So our lanes got tighter when we're rushing the quarterback. Mm. Sometimes these guys are so used to just getting to the quarterback, they think that they're just going to stand there and get hit. They need to remember that you got to kill what you eat. You know, Mm -hmm. you can't just – swim through a guy, you know, make a really egregious move. And it looks cool on film to get blow mm-hmm. by a guy, right. but you're out of your gap. Thank you know, you. you're not, you, you're blowing yep. integrity. And yep. then when plays get extended, yep. your aggressive secondary is kind of left with their pants yep. down. And they're even though we don't want to give them, we don't want to let them off the hook. They need to plaster better. Right. But 
some of those, if you look at some of those flushed out pockets, our defensive linemen are literally falling over each other. Yeah. You know, that that shouldn't happen. Can't happen. And it cannot happen. Real and, quick, with the DNs, I thought what was interesting, like Bosa, these guys are wide nine guys, and they're trying to get the edge. They create a huge B-gap to scramble through. And finally, Bosa's adjustment at the end was, I'm just going to bull rush you. Bull rush. I'm just – and that's what you have to do if the – Yes. You can't give up that B-gap. I've been talking about it for weeks. You never give up the B-gap ever. Yeah. If you look at um the way uh, Eric Armstead – if you ever look at the way Eric Armstead rushes the passer – he never sacrifices his gap because, first of all, he's so goddamn long. But one of the things that he likes to do is he swipes and replaces where he doesn't move his track. He more or less gets a piece of your body to stay on his track. Yeah. Um, and the boys know how to do it. it it's yeah. just that, you Discipline. know, they need to understand to stay on that. Yeah. Make it a point of emphasis. Yeah, don't go one for the sack. Keep them, in, keep them in the freaking pocket. That's, how you want to, that's what you want to do for most of these quarterbacks. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and don't yeah. make wholesale changes. Don't do that. Um, DB is a confidence position. You don't well, want to make let me, positions. Let me, let me come back to you. So you were mentioned plaster coverage. There are two dudes in the secondary right now that I think most fans are, are concerned about. Let me start with one. Lenore. He shouldn't be – I mean, he's supposed to be the nickel. He's starting outside because Mosley's uh, out. And it seems like, to me, Lenore's doing the best he can. He's not supposed right. to be a starting outside corner, but – he is giving up long catches. He hasn't given up any touchdowns so right. far. Do you think he needs to be replaced, or do you think you can work with Lenore as a coach? You can work with Lenore. Okay. Absolutely not. Um, okay. If 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 we had the number one defense and Lenore took over, what was that? Where did where did E Man get hurt? Week, like week five? Well, yeah, four or five. Six, four or five, six. Something He's like that. been here. He's yep. been here. Um, I, I feel like if you have to compile games to figure out if Lenore is a problem then that's yeah. you that's us just understanding that he's an imperfect vessel you right. don't you don't move him wholesale off of a position because he had a bad Devontae game Adams Devontae got Adams him a few times yeah and yeah. Tariq Hill yeah. and yeah. Washington is you know Curtis Samuel is a guy Terry Dotson's McCorin a guy. is a guy Dotson's a guy he's a yeah yes yeah. Dotson yeah. is a guy so a guy. Yeah. um I feel like we're looking at the cracks in the marble and we're not and we're kind of not appreciating the beauty we're kind of like ah it's not perfect well it's not also perfect. also jack rabbit jenkins uh janoris jenkins isn't going to be better ambry's not going to be better D'Amico isn't stupid if he had a better option to be on the field right now and i don't think you know who i think could do it but i don't think they just have enough confidence samuel womack could do it but i don't think he has enough confidence yeah he's they're too not gonna young. do that they're not he's too young because that. honestly i think they don't want to turn him into another ambry Ambry's fair. confidence is gone. Fair. Okay, so hold on. So let's let's get away from Lenore. Lenore's doing the best okay. he can. He's taking a lot of criticism. The other guy is Hafunga. It seems right. like recently, once a game, this dude's given up a touchdown over his head. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think? Uh, is he is he is is he a, is he becoming a liability? No. 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 I okay. think he's. I think I think he's becoming. I think he's becoming readable. Okay. I think he's. I think that I think he's becoming a trait in our defense. Yeah. But I don't think that he's a li He's a liability. I, you you don't you don't look at the bad things that a player does and just weigh in on the cons. He does far True. more good than he does bad. Far more good. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's um, how it was early in the season. Can I just say my my read on Hafunga real yeah, quick? Go ahead. Really good player. Hell of a first half of the season. He started getting some really heady com uh, com uh, comparisons. People comparing him to Troy Palomalu. Uh, he right. gets a Pro Bowl selection. I feel like he's doing a little too much. Maybe like those, you know, those uh, comparisons have gone to his head a little bit, and he's out there freelancing a little bit more than he should. Maybe the way that Troy Palomalu did or R Ronnie Lott did, where it's like maybe, man, Get back to what you were doing the first half of the season when you were a little bit more disciplined. Maybe I'm wrong. That's just the way it seems to me. Well, okay. So I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Um, and what I how I would respond to that is is that Troy Palomalu wasn't Troy Palomalu right away. Sure. Um, so you know, sure. it's kind of like if we, if we are watching, if we're watching a kid that is doing this at this stage of his career, one could say from your from your anecdotes, like. Hey, maybe he's getting a little too much. Like maybe he's getting, yeah. maybe he's playing. Maybe he's a product of how much praise he's getting. Maybe he's feeling or, himself a little too much the last month. Right. Or you could look at it from a coaching perspective and say, 
well, let me support the instincts that he's trying to grow. Like you know, that. if if like this it. if he, like if this it. is what he's trying to do, let me. And if you see him as an asset it, moving forward, let's work this out. Let, we yeah. have to work it out, right? All right? So you embrace that type of stuff. 